great Bible teacher John Stott once said, Christianity is essentially a revealed religion. We would know nothing about God if he hadn't made himself known. This is essentially, especially true when we're talking about the character of God. Many people have a God made in their own image. They have their own concept of what God should be like. But the Bible tells us exactly what he is like, and we are to take that as a revelation from him to us. So we read in Isaiah 55 these wonderful words that we are to seek the Lord while he may be found and to call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake their ways, the unrighteous man their thoughts, and let them turn to the Lord, for he will have mercy, and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. Verse 10 says, As the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return to it without watering the earth and making it bud and flourish, so that it yields seed for the sower and bread for the eater, so is my word, just like the rain and snow. The word that goes out of my mouth, both the written word of God, the Bible, and the living word of God, the Lord Jesus, it will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve my purpose for it. And so the scriptures tell us that it is God who in mercy takes the initiative to come to us. Jesus is like the rain. He comes down from heaven as a mercy of God to give life. He waters the earth. What he does always succeeds. And then he returns to heaven. After his successful death on the cross, I say successful because he wasn't put there by the hands of men, although they were part and involved in the whole crucifixion story. Jesus willingly gave him up because it was the will of the Father. And the Bible tells us in Isaiah, when he sees all that has been accomplished by his anguish, he will be satisfied. And so Jesus died, was buried, and the gospel is, on the third day, he rose again, victorious over sin and death. We read in the book of Hosea, let us acknowledge the Lord. Let us press on to acknowledge him. As surely as the sun rises, he will appear. He will come to us like the winter rains and like the spring rains that water the earth. And so Christ has come. He's accomplished salvation for all who believe. And now notice the result. This is Isaiah 55, verse 12. You will go out in joy and be led forth in peace. The mountains and hills will burst into song. And all the trees of the field will clap their hands. Instead of the thorn bush will grow the juniper. And instead of briars, the myrtle will grow. This will be for the Lord's renown, for an everlasting sign that will endure forever. For he has endowed you with splendor. The message first given to Israel in captivity, that if they turn and seek him and turn forsake their ways, he will bless them. All the nations in the end, at the very end of the age, will come. And it's for the Lord's glory, the Lord's renown. And instead of the curse of the thorns, there will be the blessings of the myrtle tree growing and the juniper, a sign of prosperity and a sign of life. So the Lord Jesus accomplished his purpose. He died for sins. He gave his life and there's enough in the atonement of Jesus and the death of Christ to forgive every sin that has ever been committed or ever will be committed. And Jesus said, I'm the bread of life. The one who comes to me will never go hungry and the one who believes in me will never thirst. The same images that started out this chapter. The idea of without money and without price, buying drink and buying food. And when we do that, the Prince of Peace gives us peace and the Prince of Hope fills us with hope. I don't know what your life has been like, but I dare say that unless you know Christ, you're not deeply satisfied because God created all of us to be um, his creatures, his, his wonderful children, 
we're the temple of God. And if the temple is empty, our souls are longing for something more. And maybe the very thing you're searching for is the Lord Jesus. The things of this world don't satisfy and they'll all perish. And someday you'll be gone. But if you put your faith and trust in Christ, he gives you life that never ends. And that's what you need to embrace. It's the living word. It's the living water. And it is the bread of life, the Lord Jesus Christ. May you trust him today. Heavenly Father, for those who know Christ, I pray that we will continue to feed upon him and find the rich feast and food that he offers to us, a life full of peace and joy and satisfaction in him, sins forgiven, and life everlasting as a gift freely given. But to those who don't know Christ, I pray today that they will trust him and find life in him forever. In Jesus' name, amen.